So my name's Stuart, I'm a physio. I've uh, been using real-time ultrasound machine in our physio practice for the last few years. And what we're going to do is just talk quickly about the ultrasound machine itself, uh, the type of probes that we use for physiotherapy and some of the functions that we need to get familiar with. So this particular machine has two probes. We have a convex probe, which we tend to use for the abdomen, core muscles, uh, some of the deeper uh, musculoskeletal structures like the hip, for example. Um, this one has a lower frequency, so it tends to be between 2 and 5 megahertz. And what the lower frequency does is it's perhaps not as defined in certain areas, but it does have deeper penetration. Whereas the linear probe, which is this one, has a higher frequency. This particular one goes from 7.5 megahertz up to uh, 10, sometimes they go up to 15 megahertz. This allows us to get really good definition of more superficial structures like tendons, the shoulder, uh, small muscle parts, nerves. Um, so depending on what you're using it for in a physiotherapy point of view, uh, often we need to have both probes to be able to visualize all the structures. So from our point of view in practice, we tend to use it for visualization and retraining of the core muscles, so the transverse abdominis, the multifidus and the pelvic floor. Um, we also do like to show the patients at certain times pathology, whether it be in a tendon or a tear or some collection of fluids such as bursitis. Um, in the scope of practice of physiotherapy, we don't tend to use it for diagnosis of muscle tears or other type of pathology, uh, but it is a good visual aid to help with our explanations to patients, to help with our explanation of treatment, uh, and also to help in providing rehabilitative exercise and biofeedback for that. So let's have a quick look at the machine here, a couple of the functions that we need to get familiar with. I'm going to show you this or demonstrate this with the convex transducer. So we just put a little bit of gel on there. The reason we need the gel is that basically ultrasound waves are going to scatter as soon as they get to air. So the ultrasound machine itself gives us the image by sending out ultrasound waves and then picking up the reflections that come back into the ultrasound head. So different materials are going to reflect ultrasound waves in different ways. So with air, we don't get any reflection, so we don't get any image. So as soon as we put this acoustic ultrasound gel on there, we can start to see a bit of an image. And that's important for transmitting the sound waves into the body as well. So if we're going to have a quick look at the machine, first of all, let's have a look at the depth button. So the depth is pretty self-explanatory. Changing the depth button here on the machine, it'll be in different places on all different machines, but basically we can zoom right in and zoom right out as well. Okay. So depth is pretty straightforward and pretty self-explanatory. The next thing we'll have a quick look at is frequency. So as I said, um, different probes are going to have different frequencies, but a lot of probes will also give you the option of being able to change the frequency. So on this particular machine, we have our frequency on the soft menus down the bottom here. So we're going to change this frequency from 6 to 7.5 and up to 10. And as I was saying, this is going to give us really good definition at 10. It's not normal for a curved probe or convex probe to be able to get uh, 10 megahertz. So that's why we get a very uh, dark image here and we can't really see much with it. As a general rule, you want to be able to go to the highest frequency that you can still get a decent image with. So we're going to have to come right back down to maybe 6.5 if we want to see a reasonable picture on this. Apart from that, we have the gain function here. So gain is going to give us our, our brightness. So if we turn our gain right down, we start to notice that the picture becomes less bright and disappears and we can turn it back up as well. And again, we're just going to adjust the gain to, if I put this on the muscle here, we'll give you a little bit of an indication. We might have to zoom in a little bit. So if the image is oversaturated, which it's not at this point, if it becomes oversaturated, it becomes very difficult to see what we're looking at. So we might turn the gain down to get a little bit more definition between structures. Okay, 
The other functions that we should probably be aware of are the different modes that we can image in. So we've got brightness mode or B mode, which is the most common. Uh, the next thing that we can do is go BB, which will give us a side-by-side -side image, which is very useful for side-to-side -side comparisons or to compare a muscle when it's relaxed to when it's contracted. The other modes that we can also do is, oh, we can even go to 4B mode on some machines. So we can have a look at four different images as they are together. And we also have a mode which is called BM or B movement. So we can have a look at the change in the picture over time 